Center away. And at the first time of asking, great start with one of the little spikes from the middle uh, of the grid. One was rather slowly away, but uh, it looks like from the outside of the front row, James Colburn, who leads the way just through our picture. I think he's just squeezed himself ahead. He is. Colburn's got himself ahead. Grindle was uh, second away, but he's been overtaken now. And uh, the pole man, Walmart, has got second place back. But it was Colburn out of the blocks like a rocket. And the young man who came up through uh, uh, Citroen Saxo Racing for the 750 Motor Club. And uh, he made a great start, but Walmer's already on his heels, um, having got into the first corner in third place. Bruce Jones, Adam St. Mary's, they're in your sight. Well, it's still our pole man in second place. He made a mistake in the entry. St. Mary's got sideways, and that's definitely allowed our quick starting James Coburn to pull clear. But in terms of pure pace, we expect Richard Walmer in bright yellow number 38 to see right, get right onto his tail. Fantastic gag of the cars. The Lennons, the Ashleys. The Seabrick Sprite, Six Sprite not yet at the front, and one of the tail enders is smoking rather badly. Yes, the red and blue uh, car in the middle of that, uh, that Charles middle of the Rain pack is yeah, smoking a little bit. Here they come then, down towards Woodcote for the first time, and it's a change of lead. Woolmer has got ahead on the Lavin straight. Coming down into Woodcote, and Colburn comes back at him. That was all a bit squirrely, wasn't it? Number 12 in second place. And uh, that is James Colburn, but it's Walmer uh, from Colburn. We've got Grindle, by the looks of things, in third place. Looking down the field, here's the type The chicane this year is made of water-filled plastic blocks. They are not to be hit in race cars because they're much more solid than the previous iteration. But 38 it is, Walmer who leads, and he's getting the car nice and sideways. Colburn comes back at him on the inside uh, of the exit of uh, Madgwick Corner. Colburn gets his nose back ahead. That absolutely sensational. They're side by side into Ford Water. Absolutely brilliant. Side by side into Ford Water, and the yellow car prevails. So it does, Marcus. Totally different driving styles. Richard Warmer doesn't mind getting his car sideways absolutely everywhere. It nearly bit him at St. Mary's on the opening up. Up the inside, well, a, a much move. better run. Absolutely picked up by Kevin. Turner there, but drifting wide. <laughs> now, this if this could last all race, that's worth the price of the admission ticket in its own right. But Warmer on the outside, twitching, and much surer than surer footed than Lennon, number 12. James Coburn still holding the lead, but by what, two feet? Well, Warmer was absolutely sensational in the wet yesterday to take hold by, uh, by almost two seconds in the end. But Colburn is uh, another young charger, and they get side by side again down the Lavin straight as Warmer pulls along the side and goes back into, uh, back into the lead. But uh, I don't think that's going to be the last move we'll see. These two really going at it, and they're Great. already drawing away from the rest of the field. And look at uh, Darren Turner's down in 10th place in Which the... Which is where uh, he predicted he'd be at the end of the yeah. first lap. <laughs> Over, uh, it's uh, underpowered, that car, in this... Um, group and all my twitches towards the chicane this is uh, absolutely fantastic so he's got display. water on his tires coben has all the grip he wants but coben much more precise but warmer just doesn't mind getting out of the loose raggedy bits yeah he's hung uh, hung james coben out to dry a little bit on the way up towards madrick but uh, being on the outside there is not a bad way to be and he gets over oh. into the apex that was a brilliant piece of driving uh, round the outside Bruce, I think part of it is that uh, Colby looks like he's got slightly wider tyres on that. It uh, looks it like he might have a little, a little place, more grip. Fourth place car is now smoking really badly. That's the number 10 car, uh, which is Charles Rainford. Yeah, puffing away in the background, but they will be getting ever further back. Now up the inside line, it's amazing. Oh, gosh, I almost don't want to breathe as they come towards me. Coburn is nothing if not brave. He does have the grip, have the grip that... Uh, Certainly the chaser, number 38, uh, does not have, but Richard Walmer, I think, has a little bit more poke in a straight line, so that evens yeah. it all out, and they're both unbelievably brave. And if you look, also, the second car, the yellow car, has a much smaller front area. It's going to be quicker in, the, in a straight line if it has similar... A uh, big Sean spin, Rayford, 17 goes Sean Rayford, around. that beautifully caught the little uh, primrose yellow uh, Lennon GT. Up the rise it goes, only one and a half places lost, really, but uh, out front it is another Lenham GT, and now the biggest lead he's enjoyed all race. It must be all of a second for our race leader, James Coburn. Yeah. They're all falling off now. Well, number 15 has gone. It's got a damaged front end. That's the 15 car, and that's Paul Walmer. That's father uh, of uh, the race uh, disputer, uh, the pole man. Uh, in the yellow car, Paul was gone and round the outside of the UK, that's going to be tight, and he holds on, brilliant stuff, lap three, and it's Woolmer goes back ahead, Richard Woolmer 
and they're side by side as they come over the start finish line. I honestly thought we were going to see the first person to smite the new tougher. They go each side of uh, one of the little Sebring spikes down the order. Just incredible. They're uh, threading the needle, these two. Grindle still third to 76, Charles Rainford still fourth, and it's small in fifth place. Jim Dean in Stephen Skipworth's car is sixth, the former 750 motor club, uh, HSCC, Strength Sports Car Club, um, 70s road sports champion, Jim well, Dean, the gardener from Newbury. Our lead duo, nose to tail coming to St Mary's, but waved yellows up ahead because father of current race leader Richard Bulmer is off at the side of the circuit, the gain is the compression, they can see there is number 15, that's Paul Wilmer's car. Suck at the side, but uh, one moment you'll have uh, Richard Wilmer in the lead, the next will be James Cope, and this time diving up the inside, but he breaks incredibly late. Is he going to be able to get the car straight enough? Of course, Cope is going to tuck up the inside. You can see that one coming. Well, another variety of overtake. There'll be plenty more before this race is over. Well, Coburn's better off the corners, isn't he? Probably with a bit better traction, but then Wilmer has that uh, slightly quicker straight line speed. He gets back alongside again down the back straight. Is he going to make it before the break zone? Actually, the, the Lenham's not slow in a straight line. They are pretty evenly matched, aren't they? Safety, safety cars coming out. Safety cars coming up for the recovery of Paul Warmer's car from the back. That's going to reunite the field, of course. And uh, it, let's just see what happened. Um, here is uh, Colburn. He locks up, doesn't he? And he has to come out of the uh, uh, out of the brakes over at Woodcote. Yep, yeah. ran a little bit wide. He actually had the biggest lead he'd had all race at that point. Of course, the safety car will close that right down. One person who seems to have gone missing is uh, Darren Turner. Last time I saw him was 10th. Uh, have you got him on your timing screens anywhere? Uh, uh, yeah, it's, he's it's dropped away. He's gone. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there's Paul Warmer. He's out of the um, out of the turn. It's a bit uh, mangled at the front. It's. Uh, Five glass of the suit be back together again. The slippery surface flag is out, and the leaders are now uh, back behind the Porsche safety car. Now it's up to the driver of the little red car in front, which I think is number three, like Graham Robson. Yeah, it's Robson to make up a lap here if he can to get back onto the tail of the pack. Let's see what happened. Well, this here. is Sean Rainford going for a, a, a little spin at the I suspect Ferris. he caught the uh, the 75 car just a little bit more quickly than he anticipated. But he got that back together nice and tightly and continued on his way. Paul Wilmer will be coming into sight shortly, but not caught on camera, we don't think. Okay. The safety car then came out as they completed their fourth lap. The order is Colburn in 12. 38 is Wilmer. Third place in that in that run behind Wilmer is number 10, which is the Smoky Lenham, the more sprite of Charles Rainford. Oh, now have another look at this is Paul oh, yes. Wilmer. Oh, oh there's been, there been some contact in the side of 33, yes. uh, which is the uh, Gordon Elwell car. Well, it just shows what a difficult corner St Mary's is. Someone gets it wrong in front of you, you're dedicated to your line and very, very hard to shift off. So I got is third in the Smoky Joe, um, and then it's uh, Brian Small. Grindle has dropped back a little bit, and Dean. 72 there is the car of Jim Dean. Lotus Europa's historic sports car club. That was a big, big moment. And that's where um, Tom Grindle had a spin, which is why he's dropped back. He started from the middle of the front row, so it's been the greatest race for him down in the fifth place. So nearly at the halfway point of this 20 minute uh, opener for our Sunday morning of racing. Evening here, the members meeting. Hopefully, this will be cleared up very shortly. The safety car will pull off. And what was already a fabulous battle between Richard Bulmer and uh, James Coburn will continue because certainly every corner there, their positions have pretty much changed on the inside, on the outside, almost over the top. But it uh, doesn't look as though anybody else can live with them. But it doesn't matter, it just takes two cars to make a race. Absolutely, although I just get the feeling if uh, Colin can get a clear lap together, he might actually be able to edge away. But he did manage it on lap three, didn't he? And then immediately went off at Woodcut and uh, Wilmer pounced to go back ahead of him again. And he just sort of stayed in his mirrors, troubling him. Uh, 
absolutely trying it again after the restart. We do wonder whether Lennon has a little bit more pace. Down the order of the Rochdale, the metallic blue Ogle, Ogle design, 66 of those made. Uh, you'd be more familiar with other Ogle designs, things like the Bond Bug uh, was um, another one. And also, if you're from Turkey, the Otto San Anadol came out of that uh, design yeah. studio. That was uh, Forge, Ford's Turkish model, that was. Have a look at the start again then of this first league cup. The greatest to start from pole from uh, Richard Warmer. Leaping out of the blocks in the middle was Tom Grindle, but round the outside it was James Coleman in the dark green car who came through to lead. Warmer, having been uh, dropped off the line, was very quick to reassert himself over Tom Grindle, coming up the inside, coming out of uh, Madwick Corner on the first uh, lap. And uh, back live then, here they are behind the safety car, and they're going to leave the uh, stricken Turner there. Looks of things. Three is the one the back marker, trying to get onto the uh, tail of the crocodile. It's a little bit smoky as well, actually it's got considerably smokier. As they've come through. And, uh, well, he's a long, a long way from the tail of the crocodile, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Half a lap down, just going out of Magic at the moment, but they're going up the Lavin Street. So. Very pretty, these aerodynamic cars. So the Wilson Spratt motorsport one's made by uh, Douglas Wilson Spratt at uh, Delta Garages and the, the Buzz of Speedwell uh, cars. Founded in 1957, John Sprinter, George Holbert, then Adam, and then Graham Hill was chairman of Speedway for, uh, uh, for some uh, while in later years. Costa knows that the five Speedway GT made. Ashley Laminates made their own versions. Lenham down in Kent. Colbert's tried to make a jump at the restart. He's backed off and then gone professional style. But Warmer's seen it coming, and the two of them are going to come through, I think, probably two or three seconds ahead of the rest of the field uh, to restore the advantage they had over them. Yeah, 0.99 um, Coleman's made by uh, being uh, perhaps a little more current with uh, his racing, a fair amount of racing in recent years. It has to be said that those behind have really let themselves string out to the frustration of those behind. Oh, oh Walworth's had off. a problem. Walworth's got a problem. He's, he's, he's pulled off, I think, or spun. That's what's happened. Um, he's going again. Oh, he's oh. been hit. He's been hit by uh, Jim Dean, and Jim Dean's gone into the barriers and uh, made a mess of the 72 car. And uh, I suspect that will uh, be curtains for this race. Jim Dean is out. He's sprinting away to the side. Um, the warmer car was crippled anyway. Was he crippled or did it just go? We didn't see how he going, went into the corner. Did he, he go going, around the gravel trap? He was going very, very slowly at that point and not looking like he was going to regain the circuit. 17's just had a moment on the grass. Well, that's Sean Rainford that proves it is quite slippery still down at St Mary's. He's going back Red on flag. Well, that's not unexpected. Off the unfortunate uh, clash on the exit of Madwick, certainly. To see. I think maybe 11. So away they go. Good start. Well, we start the yeah. 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 very well rapidly into away. The lead into the first corner. There's lots of jostling for position behind, but he's got a good lead of uh, five or six car lengths. Grindle is second. Davis trying to come around the outside. Uh, it was slippery there before. Uh, but uh, Davis in the pale blue car is fourth ahead of Brian Small. Uh, and then the rest of them in there, seven I think that was, uh, which is Will Corey Jr. Well, down to Ford Water, it's very much Grindle, then the gap, and then the two pale yellow cars, but it's uh, Grindle, sorry, Grindle in second place behind Coburn, and third place is Sean Rainford, and uh, Coburn escaping as we thought he probably would behind. And people behaving. Saw Rainford being very careful through St Mary, so he's lost ground in third place, allowing Tom Grint to see what he can do about uh, the driver in front, James Coburn. I think the answer may be nothing. And everyone behaving very well indeed as they jostle for position down into Lavent. On the opening part of this eight-minute restart. 18, very uh, aerodynamic car. Ian he, he Davis, smoking. I think. There's uh, a problem seven? for Daryl Davis, as you say. No, not Daryl Davis, no, it's, it's the not, other one. It's the, the, other, the, the other pale blue one. Um, I think seven. that's... Uh, that's got an issue. That Will Corey Jr. That yes, is, it is. It is. He's broken. It's uh, just the puffs of smoke coming out in front of the bottom of that car. But out front will still be the dark green car of Colburn. 
second place is Grindle, then it is Sean Rainford, then it's Daryl Davis and Brian Small. And with another pair of cars jostling for position. So then the main sort of pack arrives, then the peloton uh, comes through with the Rochdale Olympic at the back of it. Colburn, Grindle, Rainford, Davis and Small. Then it's uh, Hewlett and Haig together, uh, and uh, Burford and Wiley are the next uh, two. Six minutes to go. Well, as you'd expect, that lead is opening out two seconds on the start-finish line between James Co Coburn and uh, Tom Grindle. By the time they get to Ford Water, I'd say it's eking out a little bit more. Down to St Mary's are yet more because Grindle is very good on the brakes, but just much braver through the corner is Coburn. He just seems to have amazing grip in that Lenham GT. He's now almost a distance between the first part of St Mary's and the second, and Sean Rainford in third place, the second Lenham in the race, is dropping back, and then behind him he's got Daryl Davis and Brian Small. Car on the grass down towards you, and that was number 18, Bruce. Oh, yes, he's rejoined, got underway again, but that's his uh, heart in mouth moment. Very quick part of the circuit on the approach to Mary's. It is deep with a tall bolt. One, two, three, uh, five, and seven, and nine at the moment. So, tall bolt, which is, uh, was leading the points at one point yesterday afternoon. It was third at the close of play, yeah, so it didn't finish well, did it? So needs, needs, the, to uh, needs the points. Yellow flags waving, double yellow flags waving down towards uh, Woodcote Corner. Not sure what that is about. I'll try and pick it up from a different angle. Leader is already through, untroubled. Colburn, oh yes, there we go. Smoky. It's the Wilson Spratt car again, isn't it? That broke yesterday uh, in, uh, uh, in practice. Had a difficult weekend. I saw the oval coming up the inside into the chicane there, but uh, has to tuck back behind its sparring partner. Grindle second, is now 5.6 seconds. There's Charles Setrington engaged in battle with the oval. That is uh, Larry Tucker behind in the red and white car. It is Roland Lewis, local man in the Rochdale. So just outside the top 10 for that trio, 11th down to yeah. 13th position. Very respectable indeed. Nobody, though, could do anything about Coburn. He gained three and a bit seconds on that previous lap. Two second advantage early in the lap. 5.6 on the start to finish line. And now as he goes towards Lavender, it's getting greater and greater. Real racing is behind. There's Charlie Centrington in 11th place with uh, the ogle of James right in behind and uh, a great scrap. And today the hood is sitting down. And when I say the hood, I do mean the, the bit that rises up to keep the rain off your head. Yesterday it was flapping around, which must be very good dive. Oh, fantastic dive. But dive uh, six on 31 there. And uh, that was Wiley trying to get past the uh, Burford. It's next Alec Poole, the uh, rally car, the other day. Wiley car, so I remember. Um, coming up the order is uh, James Willis, number two, the uh, Curia Cost liveried Jacobs uh, midget, Dick Jacobs, uh, who uh, his competition activities uh, pretty much kept MG sales going for uh, many years in the home counties. On K21, appears to be on the move. Uh, I think he's going to come through ahead of number 16, Small, who was at the start of that. He's right up behind number 75 guy as well, so he could move up to four fairly soon, I think. Well, if he does, he'll then pull away, because he really caught that. It was a great little battle between Davis and Small. He's not only caught it, but he was some distance behind at the start of the lap, but uh, he will go through any time soon. Let's see if he's going to make a move down to, to Magwick. Not close enough, but he's uh, right in the slipstream. See what he can do on the, the run out of there and then down towards Ford Or Has he just ducked up the inside? He has. Okay. Very neat. Very tidy driving there. So this is what these cars should be doing. They should be nipping and tucking and ducking and diving, but uh, no such uh, action like that for race leader James Coburn pulling ever further clear. But Daryl Davis has been enjoying a great scrap with Brian Small. It is rejoined, and now they will just watch the driver who hunted them down pull off and go away. That's the Lenham GT of Haig, 21. So that means you've got a Lenham 1, 3, 4, so they're, uh, they're coming to the four. To and the Torbolt, end. yeah, and uh, Torbolt, 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. Now with Haig up into fourth place, and if Small, who's attacking Davis now to get through, we have Torbolt one, two, three, four, five in this. Well, just in case you wonder what the heck we're talking about, Torbolt is one of the four houses. Every person on their entrance ticket uh, has a house nominated for them. They can pick up points, but the drivers can do a huge amount towards their house thrust. Torbolt, that's Emmanuel Piro's house, seems to be gaining the points in this race, that's for sure. Yes, eight Tor Boltons uh, in the top 12. 
So if Colbert comes through again, on, on going on to what I think will be his, uh, his last lap. And uh, he's... Uh, Stretch that lead ever further. Only Tom Griddle's kept him in sight, yes. in fairness. He could come across, he's eight seconds behind. He's got down to 138.5, so within a second of, uh, of Colburn's uh, time that, that time through. Well, I think the only change we might have is a swap of the Lenham in third place to the one in fourth, because uh, Haig is really starting to close in on Sean Rainford, so that could be very interesting as Mike Haig puts his head down in number 21. He's the driver doing the passing, the driver's doing the dicing there with Daryl Davison, 75 and 16 Ian Small in the Ashley GT. They try every single corner, the tail comes out on Daryl Davis. That won't help his momentum. Now, Haig was actually quicker than everyone other than Lee the last time. Yes. So that included taking a position. So, yeah, I think you're right, Bruce. He's, he's, got, uh, he's got two seconds to find, uh, and he's done a outright best of anyone in the first sector. So he's really going after that third spot, and he's got 30, we've got 30 seconds left on the clock. Well, at St Mary's, he's about a second behind Sean Rainford. They're now going down into dip. We're still watching now. There has been the place change. Daryl Davis, that wag of the tail, cost his momentum, as I suggested, and he's fallen behind Small. Small there in the Ashley GT, going up towards Lavant. 31 and 6 have been enjoying such a scrap. Uh, that's keeping us entertained too. That is uh, 9th and 10th, Burford and Wiley. Wiley in 6. It's been nip and tuck all the way. There's uh, James Coleman, up down uh, inside the Westport Motorsport car. And the clock has come down to zero, so this is the end of the final lap, and Coburn hasn't put up the foot wrong. Brilliant start to and the first part. Two cars together for third as they come into Woodcut, and I think Haig has got ahead already. See, Haig is carrying some speed in the. Uh, he is. This is going to be as well. Quick lap from. Uh, from uh, he snatched third place on the final uh, on the final lap, and he comes through. And I think it's going to be his personal best lap as well. He gained, no, one, he he, he gained a position uh, every lap. Did uh, Haig? 